first-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Esavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look here at some of these markets. Uh, they're jumping around quite a bit. So uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up. If you'll notice the chart that I posted here. Hold on, folks. I've got... <laughs> hey, boys are... <laughs> they're, playing, they're playing hardball today, so hold on one second. All righty, just a second here. I'm, I'm putting... Well, never mind. It doesn't make any difference what I'm doing. You just want to figure out what you're doing. All right, we take a look at that chart, and if you'll see here, the bottom of that chart is where we made the low of the day, and then we had the really strong rally. It's been in the news so much that it's hard to believe that everybody was talking about it. Folks, we've seen this happen before. I know you don't believe markets repeat, but they do. So the next one I'm going to show you is what we are expecting for today. And uh, let's get this up here one second. Uh, there we go. Hold on. All righty. Okay, there was our low yesterday. There was our high today, exactly 61% of the 382 that we did right back here. These moves, folks, are exactly equal. That's equal, and that is equal. The high of the day, exactly. Okay, so we are expecting, and the market is trading down now here, folks. It didn't go up, did it? I mean, everybody was excited about it yesterday up in here. My God, you couldn't, you couldn't get anybody to sell it. But look what's happened today. Now we're coming all the way down. I think we're down to 3600 or 3609, something like that. We went way below the, uh, see this is 3507, so it's probably down in here. I don't know where it is, but it doesn't look very good. That's the way it looks. Anyway, that's my two cents worth, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, our guest today will be Stan Harley. And then, uh, of course, on Monday, we're going to have Bill uh, Meridian doing a review of what he's been looking at uh, for quite some time. And I wanted to bring to your attention something that uh, was shared last uh, a few days ago. I uh, didn't say very much about it or anything, but uh, I wanted to bring it up to you to show you what it was. This was uh, from a gentleman that Peter Elidis told us about when we were doing. I'm going to post his chart for you and talk about it a little bit because I went to the professionals that I talk to whenever I have a question. And this is basically showing the three years, 1929. 1987 and today and he was showing the similarities of these cycles with the Yom Kippur the problem is folks uh, the chart that he's looking at here they're, they're daily charts okay but you got to remember here on this day right here in October 16th on the, that Friday that was one day right here okay and that, that's a that's a big discrepancy here that was definitely a crash the market was down 16 percent this market here from here to here it dropped about 50% and made a bottom on November the 11th of uh, 1929 and then rallied for four months up into guess where, folks? April Fool's Day. And that was almost an exact 61% retracement. It was 59.9. And from there, folks, it gave back everything. The high in the Dow had been 383. The low came in July 8th. Thank you very much, Mr. Chapman. July 8th of 19... I hope it was July 8th. Yeah, July... Oh, I probably screwed that up. Basil, let me know if I, I get it wrong every time. Uh, July 8th, 1932, at the price of 41-something in the Dow Jones. And from 41-something is where I issued the buy signal. And uh, the buy signal, we got out at 30,900. Oh, wait, I wasn't born in 1929, was I? Well, I can't use that one. Anyway, I, I, I checked this with Tim Bost and a couple other people that I really respect. And they said, yeah, there's some similarities, but then not so much. But, folks, stop and think where you're going to be here. Just give me a second here to see if it's going to uh, – uh, 
Well, it just doesn't have a whole lot of a whole lot of action going on right now. My limits are my my. Oh, I see what's going on. Sorry, folks. Sorry, folks. Anyway, that's uh, that's what we're looking at here uh, today. I've got to uh, do one other thing here for just a second, and then I have to be very very careful in here. Just a second here. I want to make sure I post the right charts, but uh, we're going to see the guy. Basically, he's saying there's going to be a crash on Monday. Or Tuesday, I think that's the day. And folks, the way it's acting, if that market closes anywhere near the lows of where we are now, or even lower, how would you feel buying that thing yesterday on the big run up, and then you come in, and then it's way down? Well, what goes up can come down, and if it comes down that quickly, and with this low that we're looking at for the 21st, 22nd, or 23rd of October, that's not going to be a very good chart. So let's uh, let's remind ourselves of that. Okay, I think it's a uh, it's important that we that we actually do that. It's it's uh, just extremely important, from my perspective anyway. I mean that's I'm just looking at it from a from a technician because that's that's all I know. I only know one thing, and I try to do that right the best I can. But you know sometimes you don't uh, you don't always get that chance. The other one, folks, is the Treasury bonds. I mean I can't believe that the Treasury bonds today went up and made a high of the most amazing things that have happened. In the last couple of days here, last 36 hours of trading, this to me has got to be the most amazing. We made a uh, 382 retracement right before Fed time at 212925. The high was 12927. And from there, when the, the, it came out, we had a stop setting in there, two ticks above there. And we had closed right before the report at 12520. And the market from there went all the way down to 122, and it dropped three points, and then rallied today, folks, and took out that high by two pips. It went to 129.30, I believe, or 125.30, and then dropped another two and a half points. We've been saying for a long time that there is something wrong in the bond market. There's a, there's a swan out there, folks. In fact, I think there's a flack of swans out there. I don't know what's going to happen, but I never. You can see how jittery the markets are. Yesterday, a short covering rally occurred, and you you couldn't. I mean, you couldn't get a dip to even buy it. Everything was higher, 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 higher. Today, you can't get anybody to sell it. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense to you. But uh, we've been saying for a long time, and I'll stick with this prediction. And I'll get it up here so everybody can see it. That is our ES uh, weekly chart. And I will get it right up here for just a second here, and you'll be able to see it. If you have any questions, 877-927-6648. Okay, now I've had a question about Apple. One of our listeners from over in Denmark asked a question about Apple, and we try to answer all the questions that we can, and we're going to bring Apple up here right now. And his question was about harmonic numbers. Harmonic numbers is a factor that I learned from Mr. Jim Twentyman when we were building the neural net program with Dennis Reagan. We kept noticing on the swings of the, all the things we were testing. Mainly it was the British pound and the euro and the S&P 500 on the 10 and also treasury bonds. And guess what? I'm going to pay a few bills here for TFNN and we'll be right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
This the gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of Apple, and the gentleman asked, why do, are these patterns so similar? The fact that they go up like this, up like this, up like this, up like this. These are harmonic numbers. Every, every stock or commodity or foreign currency, commodity doesn't make any difference. They all have their own harmonic number. That's a number that appears over and over again. Look on the upside. I didn't draw them in on the upside, but they, you can see the harmonic numbers here. Harmonic numbers are a byproduct of A, B equals C, D. And so when you start to see those, harmonic numbers have one really, really important advantage. When you go beyond a harmonic number, there something has really significantly happened, either on the upside or on the downside. The reason why today is so important in the S&P is that the low we made yesterday at 3507 was one standard deviation. And we rallied 100 and what, 68 points or something. We're down 100 points right now. I forget how much. It was 200 points. No, how much? I don't remember. Yeah, it was 200. 3507 to 3727, uh, which was a 61% retracement of the high we made eight days ago. So that's how these numbers fit together. They were found using the MIPS computer. MIPS stands for millions of integers, integers per second. And it would spit out uh, things that were, you know, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, line up correctly. So I'll uh, just move. That's that's all I wanted to talk about, Apple. I hope that answers the question. Uh, it's talked about a little bit in some of the books. I wrote a book, Harmonic Vibration, and uh, tells you more about it, but that's not important. Here's what's important, folks. Let me talk about open interest for just a second. We had this monster move yesterday. It was in news everywhere. Even on the sports channels, they were talking about it. Look what open interest did, folks. There's the S&P open interest you see right here with 2.5 million contracts, an open interest increase of 28,000. <laughs> That's like putting sugar in tea. That's how small it is. And you can see here that some of these are even even smaller. So that was mostly the few, few buyers coming in, but a lot of it had to be short covering. But there were some buyers coming in, and that's the main thing that you want to look at. That happened to be I, the two that I showed you there. I want to show you. you you'll, you'll see the first one was the equities. They were up 28,000 out of 4.6 million, 
And, uh, of course, now you can see the interest rates, why it's so important. 32 million, folks. That's eight times what the S&P is. And the open interest was 23,000, uh, uh, increased by uh, less than uh, one less than 1%. And now anybody that bought that rally uh, or sold it, they're probably sitting there uh, losing. That's basically how it works. I'm not sure it's going to keep working like that, but hold on, folks. They're they're telling me to pay attention again, so I've got to keep paying attention. I've got a position on that is actually uh, doing okay. I t folks, I, this is one of the few times that I do um, I, that I do the show where I'm really exhausted. I didn't even want to trade today, but when I came in and saw exactly what I was thinking was going to happen, I said, "Well, <laughs> I got to do something." So the bonds went to the exact number. The S&P went to the exact number. So I said, well, you got to stick with it, what you know, what little it is, and then you go from there, and you'll see if it's going to uh, work or whether it's not going to work. And that's what we're paying attention to right now. That's why I've got my limit minder set up here because uh, I think that there's a chance here that we're going to look at something Monday when you're going to come in. It's going to be – and I'm just looking at the chart, and I've been saying this for a long time. But when you got a market, remember – Remember the words of John Jameson, any market that can give you fantastic gains can take it away. So that's a very, very important factor to remember. The market is setting at a very critical level because it was down one standard deviation. But the problem is, I know it's only backed off not even 61%, but by golly, it should have had some follow through because it was in the news and people were talking about it quite a bit. So I think it's it's extremely important to do that. There's one other one that's really interesting, too. And that is the old, uh, let's get this up here, the old British pound. God save the king and may the, he live forever. As you can see, oh, dear, I hope it, the pound trade didn't show, did it? Uh, I hope, I'm going to have to do it again. Hold on a second. Sorry, folks. I, I don't know whether, oh, I heard it. I forgot to hit the live button. I'm really tired. <laughs> These last two days have been a real bear for me. Oh, real bear. That's a Freudian slip. We've got a caller trying to save my bacon. And speaking of bacon, we got Mr. Z in the Philly. How are you, John? Larry, I'm doing very well. And I'm not on any medication. I'm just slip, tired. My friend, <laughs> it's been a real bear for you. Right. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I think they haven't seen a bear yet. What they did yesterday, they poked him in the eye, and now he's angry. <laughs> no, they did poke him in the eye. Yeah. Incredibly. Yes, indeed. Uh, Larry, uh, first and foremost, thank you for yesterday uh, on your show. At, well, a couple of reasons, actually. Uh, Tom Hugarts. Um, yes. That's, uh, I must confess, every time I listen to Tom speak, Mm -hmm. He articulates so well so many things that percolate through my mind. Uh, uh, and I, I'm not, uh, I won't say I've got anywhere near the skill he has, but some of the thoughts that he just articulates are thoughts that rattle around in my head. And it's so nice, mm -hmm. so helpful to hear him just lay those out such that you can uh, just listen to him and examine it. So thank you for having him on. And he is just one terrific guy. There's no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, he's a stand-up guy. He really likes to help people. But, boy, let me tell you, that dude paid the price. Uh, go, what, let, you, people, can you stay on for the next, oh, the next segment we got? Stand on. Tell us what you need, my friend. Tell, what can I help you with? Anyway, you uh, laid out the conditions that would uh, – to look for to put on a potential short sale on the e mini s and ps uh, if that rally extended of course which it did and now we've turned lower question larry if you're short uh, and i know you are and i am as well um under what can well, not not what conditions at what price level if broken would you actually press the short side adding to the short side on weakness. If we close below the 786 number of what we did yesterday, I would definitely yep. press it there. Yeah, that, that number would just uh, for uh, uh, your listeners uh, benefit that number 
is 3552 on the uh, the E-mini S&Ps. Yeah, we closed below there. Yeah, if we close badly, like there's a possibility we could, then they're looking at something that could be, you know, a little bit... Uh, a little bit startling. John, you know, you're looking at your quote board. I'm looking at mine. You can't find anything green except the stuff in your wallet. You know what I mean? So, I mean, <laughs> yes, if this indeed. thing is looking yeah, more yeah, bearish yeah, every yes, day. Indeed. Yes. Even the green. Well, uh, uh, thanks so much. Uh, we look forward to listening to your guests. Buddy, I appreciate it. Keep the faith. Thanks, John. Very good. Bye now. You bet. Folks, you just heard one of the best trainers I've ever met. And I'm, you know, he's in the class of uh, Tom. Well, Tom is all by himself, but uh, he's in the class of Amos Hostetter. And also, uh, ow, ouch, 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 ouch. Can't remember his name in the book. It's right. Super Jack. <laughs> wow, this is terrible. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and we have on the line Mr. Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. Stan, how are you doing? Hello, Larry. I'm doing awesome. I'll bet you are. What did you think of that rally yesterday, Stan? <laughs> It was uh, probably not what the public expected. Of course, the yep. in the CPI data uh, came out worse than expected, and the market rallied. Um, I've got some charts that I thought I'd share with the viewers today, maybe give a little insight into what I think is might be going on here. Okay, we've got the monthly low uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average to the present, the long-term one, 242-month. Yes, uh, that's our first chart here today. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the, the market has had a tendency, Larry, to make 
cycle lows about every 242 months. Uh, going back, oh my gosh, 80, 90 years. Uh, we made a low in April 1942. We made a low in June of 62. Uh, then August of 82, October 2002. And if the pattern continues, I, I underscore if, if the pattern continues, it would suggest we should be looking uh, December 2022, plus or minus, for the next low in this series. Now, what's interesting is the standard deviation on this cycle has been zero. That's very unusual. Will wow. it continue? Well, I don't know, but uh, right now the evidence is uh, what I would call very compelling. Wow, it certainly is. Now I'll get the second chart up here. This is the SPX, and we'll bring it yeah, this right is up. The, this, is, this is the weekly chart of the S&P 500 index. And uh, what's interesting is the market yesterday pulled back and tagged the underside of the 200-day moving average. And right now, as we speak, it's kind of sitting right on it. The last two times it did this, March of 2020, December of 2018, the 200-week MA was supportive with a modicum amount of overthrow. Uh, so will it this time? Well, so far it has proven to be so, but I, I don't think the, the bear is done yet. But I think uh, in the near term, though, we, uh, we're probably going to see uh, some continued buoyancy. Okay. Now, what, uh, we have a question from one of our listeners. Uh, what is your ultimate price objective for the S&P 500 on this run? Uh, I am guessing, this is just a very, very best guess, that the S&P essentially holds right in this area. I think we're going to have a lower low, which I go into in a couple more slides in December, mm -hmm. Co mm -hmm. coincident with that 242-month cycle we just addressed. And my guess is the Dow goes lower, and we get some kind of a divergent structure similar to 1974. Okay. Uh, in 1974, the market is measured by the S&P 500, bottomed in October, and then two months later in December, we got a slightly lower low in the Dow Jones Industrials, but not the S&P, and mm -hmm. the December low was at the orthodox cycle bottom, and from that point, the market moved higher. And I, I'm thinking uh, we might get a similar type pattern this time around. That is to say, the S&P may have seen its low, which could hold for a number of months, but the Dow makes a lower low in December. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Uh, one other question that someone's asked, do you see a crash scenario sometime in October or November? No, I don't see a crash, no. Okay. Uh, a, an orderly pullback to be sure, but a crash, no. For the, for the VIX gets mm -hmm. uh, zooming up into um, major double-digit territory, Mm -hmm. A la 1987. No, I, I I don't envision anything like that. I don't I don't okay. see I don't see that developing. Okay, you know it, it, people complain about. It. I said, but you know the, the the crash of 1987 was the best buying opportunity. The all of 1980s. You know people didn't realize that, but it was. I mean, uh, well, got I remember that day there were only 13 oh, issues wow. out of 1600 of the New York Stock Exchange that were up on that day. Well, uh, in a bull market advance, the dips are to be bought. But when the bull market transitions, mm -hmm. uh, that operable uh, buy the dips mentality needs to be uh, shaken, not stirred, so to speak. Um, <laughs> no longer operative. And I think we're in an environment like that. Uh, I think beginning with the January highs of this year, somewhat akin to the January 73 highs. Um, mm -hmm. The market basically a thousand on the Dow Industrials throughout the 1960s, 1970s, and early 80s was a ceiling for the overall market. Yes, it uh, was. It spanned uh, about 20 years. Mm -hmm. I think we have entered a similar environment where the great grandiose bull market advance has, has hit a secular peak. That happened in January this year. And we're looking at, I'm using 20 years, I don't know the number, but a long period of time of sideways structure somewhat similar to what we saw for the 20-year period that began about 1962. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very interesting. Now, by the way, before we get to the next slide, you had a really nice uh, uh, compliment from one of our speakers, Peter Lides, 
Uh, wow. He said he thought your your work was, uh, you know, really uh, some of the best, you know, so I think that was good, you know, because I know you, oh. we all started with the same book with by Hearst, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, he was very uh, complimentary of you. And he's a pretty stand up guy, too. So by golly, that's he, a feather in your indeed. cap. Yeah, he sure um, is. And I don't take that lightly. That's very, very kind of him to say that. And I, yeah. I would speak equally favorably, favorably of his work as well. You know, he and, and you and I were on uh, television in the Southern California oh, uh, area yeah. back for many years. He was on FNN, Financial News Network. And so was I. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fun times. And do, do you remember Gene, uh, Gene uh, what was Gene's Gene last Morgan. name? Gene, Gene Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. Tra what was Trading the Market? Was that it? Yes. They came yeah, on Trading right the Market. Close. He would come on at 1 o'clock every charting day. For his, charting the Market. Charting the Market. Yeah, Charting the Market. He would come on. And I I knew Gene very well because Byron and I said, oh, I shouldn't be telling you this. We don't want to talk about you. We'll, we'll, this is more important. Hold on just a second. You know, the one bad part about getting old, Stan, and I don't feel old. I just am old. That the only thing that you can really rely on is your wonderful memories. And boy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I've, I thank God for that, you know. <laughs> I have to tell that story about Gene Morgan because uh, we got we got time here. But uh, well, because we got a minute, like a break coming up. But uh, he was setting up a, a hedge fund for uh, it was well not a hedge fund. It was a commodity trading fund for the S and P 500 in 1980. Was it 84? Byron and I were both on the floor. Byron came out to visit me, and since we were floor traders, he wanted input. So he said, "You you need to have a you know a track record." So we traded the thing for three months and did pretty good. And uh, when it came time to sign all the papers or something, we weren't included. <laughs> but that was okay. We didn't want to work on it for very long anyway. But when we went to dinner with him, uh, he, he was very strange because he was right-handed. And he was putting his left hand behind his back where you sat. And then he would push his back in. So he basically looked like he had one arm. And he cut everything with his fork. And we asked him about it. He said, that's a habit I I learned in the army, and then I found out later he was never in the army. You know, so <laughs> it was strange. Anyway, uh, we got a break to pay. Uh, to pay, uh, Stan, I've been up. I think I have four hours sleep in the last two nights, and I am, I'm literally exhausted. So please bear with me, okay, buddy? Understood. But we will have a break here in a minute. I hope. Well, wow. Until the music comes on, perhaps we could go to the next chart, Larry. Uh, yeah, let, let me do that just a second, and I'll get it up here so we can see it. Well, here's the music, so here's we'll be the right. Music. Okay. Hey, thanks, pal. Yeah. It's... You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, we're talking with Stan Harley, and he's got a chart up here of the S&P 500, and you want to tell us what you're looking at, my friend? Yes, Larry. Uh, this is a chart that you and I have discussed on a number of occasions in the recent past, and this is an update through today. Um, what I have done is I have found that each of the pivotal turns since the uh, January high in the stock market have uh, has coincided with the major Fibonacci ratios, 0 0.146, 236, 382, 618, and so forth. And uh, I put these into a spreadsheet, done what's called a regression analysis, and taken the data and projected into the future. And the next significant Fibonacci ratio is the 0.854 function. That is due right around election day. And then the 1.00 function is due right at the last day of the year. So. What this is telling me, it's suggesting the potential for some type of a reversal right around Election Day. Could be a high, could be a low. Uh, and another reversal right around uh, the last day of the year, mm -hmm. uh, which, interestingly enough, you recall from the chart that we talked about earlier, that 242-month cycle suggesting a December low. I think the bear market low occurs the last week of December based on oh, this okay. and, and some other things that I'm tracking. Okay, we have a question from one of our listeners. Can you tell us the day and the exact time, please? Of that, uh, oh, wait, that guy was from Tucson, Arizona. Forget him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people always ask it. But, you know, if you can get close within a week on these things, you're doing pretty good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ed, I, oh, that, boy, oh, boy. Uh, See, I'm, thinking of, I'm thinking of Ed Hart. Uh, I know he he knew you him you knew him very well as did I but what a what a wonderful human being he was my yes. goodness uh, too bad that people can't see some of the people you know, John Bollinger was on that show uh, Ron uh, Insana who runs a hedge fund now Bill Griffith CNBC and uh, of course uh, uh, Sue Herrera which you know started CNBC people don't know this but FNN was owned by uh, Merrill Lynch. And Glenn, ne not Glenn Neely, well, Glenn Taylor. And Glenn Taylor was going with uh, 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 Sue. They broke up, and then they stopped FNN. Uh, mm -hmm. Merrill Lynch stopped the funding, and so she went back there and made a proposal to to CNBC or CBS to make the uh, you know to make the uh, the show, and uh, they took it, and uh, that's what started the whole thing. And she's done very well. She's. Uh, Really a beautiful girl. Uh, what a wonderful heart she has. And she raises dogs. She's no kids, but she's married to a really nice uh, uh, specialist. I think he's an internal medicine specialist. specialist. But tell us, do you have any special memories from the old TFN or from the old FNN show that you'd care well, to share with uh, us? Um, one anchor that uh, I thought was just exceptional uh, was Richard Saxton. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah and, he, uh, uh, he had, and his family were engrossed in Southern California, and the children were yep. in school. 
and yeah. uh, thought long and hard about it, but decided not to make the move to New York. So he, he stayed in L.A., but yeah. uh, just a tremendous news anchor from the financial yeah. field. Did he, did he stay in, in the business? Yeah, you know, I haven't kept in touch with him, yeah. so I'm really not sure where his career took him. Yeah. But yeah. just a fine, fine gent all around. Yeah. There's uh, only a few of us left, you and I and Peter, and uh, Arch <laughs> Crawford was on that show. And uh, I'm God, glad you included the two of us. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm about 10 years older than you, but, uh, you know, I, I thank God I got this business because I don't know what I'd do if I had to get up yeah. in the morning. You know, I, 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 I master. I don't know if you know this or not, but I mastered golf on my very first, uh, my very first hole that I played, and I figured out it, it's either you know, you, there's only two habits that I have in golf that are bad: uh, driving and putting. The rest of it I, I I've mastered pretty well. <laughs> so I would never play golf. I thought it was very, uh, very sickening. Yeah. Anyway, are you getting any sleep these We're, days? Because boy, I certainly have with these last two yeah, days. It's, it's always been really tough. Uh, yeah. Do we have time for a couple more charts? Yes, sir. I, I didn't, okay. didn't have any more. I only had. Uh, oh, yeah. I only had. Oh, I only okay. had one. Oh wow! I missed a whole bunch of them here. Uh, okay, how about or the? We, or we can go to my screen. Uh, I've yes, go ahead. Just bring them up. Fire away. That'd Folks, be great. TFNN can uh, switch over can, to me. Can I hang up and, and leave, and you take the whole show from now on? <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll, we'll stay with best. you for the whole. <laughs> Thank you, Stan, for putting up with me today, buddy. Go ahead. The uh, the next chart here, Larry, is. Uh, the New York Composite Index, which uh, I don't know why, but but most analysts don't follow the NYA, the New York Comp, and it is the broadest measure of activity on the New York Stock Exchange, and probably the best measure. Most of us follow the S&P, but the better measure really is the New York Composite Index. Well, uh, what I've done here with my cycle tool is each of these lines are equally spaced, and they're spaced at 47 trading days. And huh? notice how well they line up with each of the highs in the stock market. I mean, yep. just within a couple of days. 47, of course, is one of those standout Lucas numbers that I often speak with you about. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Lucas number 47 is uh, the defining number for now in the high to high sequence that we see in the stock market. And there was another, another one coming here in a few days. And there's another one due at the end of the year. Well, Stan, a couple of slides ago, you said a low is due at the end of the year. But this chart suggests a high is due at the same time. Well, maybe it inverts. <laughs> yep, that has happened, yeah. We'll, we'll see. But per, perhaps the better takeaway here is we're getting what appears to be important trend changes at 47 trading day, plus or minus, uh, trading day intervals in the, in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And that has just a, been a very, very uh, pristine rhythm on the uh, on the chart for the New York Composite and the S&P and the Dow and the Nasdaq. Wow, that's really good stuff. Did you if have we another one? Down to a, a shorter time frame, which I've done here in this next chart. Uh, the the high over on the left occurred on June the second, and each one of these lines in my tool. Uh, are spaced at 18 trading days. 18, of course, another Lucas number. And look how well 18 trading days, crest to crest, they've defined all of the highs since June the 2nd. Wow. The next one is due right at the end of this month, and then, and so on. One later in November and one in December. Um, that pattern, too, has been quite regular in its recurrence. And defining market highs on the charts, on the charts, daily charts for the stock market. Wow, it's just really good stuff. I'll tell you, when I look at these, I say all the work that you put in on these things is just uh, really spectacular, and you do a great job. How many years now you've been doing the Harley letter? Thirty-five or something? Oh, just one or two, Larry. Yeah, right. <laughs> I took your course. <laughs> it's at least thirty <laughs> years, isn't it? Yeah. Professionally, 30, and then myself, I've been involved with the markets uh, since the early 80s for about 40 years, wow, 40 or zero. Do you like living back east as opposed to the West Coast? Um, I spent most of my adult career in the Southwest. Uh, yeah. Went to high school, college in Texas, then moved to California with the Navy and aerospace and the markets. Yeah. Uh, but now yeah. I'm in New Jersey. Love it. Four seasons. Yeah, it's beautiful. Good. 
Listen, buddy, we're going to have you on again soon. And thank you so much for putting up with me today. I'll get some sleep the next time we do this, okay? <laughs> look forward to Thanks, it, Thanks, Stan. My pleasure. Love you, buddy. Keep the faith. I look forward to seeing you in December, okay? Put it on your book. Will do. Okay. We'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I'm going to show you a pattern here. This is John Hill's Yum Yum. John was my tutor. tutor. I met him in 1970 in San Francisco when we were with this Hearst uh, Profit Magic uh, Convention. And uh, I learned this through many, many years. Uh, he's 97 now and hasn't been with us for a while, but he's he's healthy and he, he does okay. You put a chart in front of him, Ed Dobson said, he said he's like 16, but he doesn't remember anybody, not even his family. But you'll see, here's a yum yum. You see, when you retrace more than 70%, there's actually 80%, you retrace 80% of this right here, John says you got them trapped. And you can see right there when you break through the 78% level, look at this, how it exploded to the upside. Remember that, folks. Also on the left side here, this is just a nice, beautiful little 135 pattern down here that took just a little over two hours to finish. It was around 9.30, 10 o'clock, maybe yeah, pretty close to 10. And then when we started taking out the highs of this area right here, we took off. We stopped here for just a second, 
And then, boom, we look, there's no back-offs here. There's one tiny little back-off, and after that, it went up. And when you start seeing that, and you start seeing new highs, and you have a, a really, really bearish news, which was really bearish, that's what put it down 600 points, and now you, or 400 points. And now you turn around, and you made it all back. They've taken bad news and spit it out in their face. Well, they're wiping the spit off today, but that's what you got to remember when you're doing that, folks. That's in John Hill's book. He's got written several books right here in front of me, uh, Timing the Market. And uh, gosh darn, I, I really, the, I owe the guy so much. He was such a good guy. We've were been friends for for a long time. Anyway, uh, he's left a great family, and that's enough of that. Listen, folks, I will not do a show again the, the way I feel today because I am just overtired. And I wanted to tell you about what's happening because the market close is really bad today. For God's sakes, don't be long. I've only been saying that for five weeks. And one of these weeks, I'll probably be right. I love you guys. And I hope to see you soon. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless. Mm -hmm.